G'day kids and grown-ups. If you are loving watching and learning with Aussie, it would be amazing if you could please do me a really big favor and just tell anybody else that you think might enjoy it too. In the meantime, enjoy this brand new episode, and as always, stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours, and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Today on Storytime with Ozzy, we've got a really fun book. It's about space, and it's called The First Hippo on the Moon. It's written by David Williams and illustrated by Tony Ross. Now let's read it together. There is a tale of two hippos. Two hippos with one dream to be the very first hippo on the moon. There's the two hippos. One enormously rich hippo, Hercules Waldorf Franklin III, paid for a gigantic hippo space center to be built to blast him there. Look, there he is there. He's even got a statue of him. Sheila didn't. Yes, the other hippopotamus's name was Sheila. One morning she announced, I want to be the first hippo on the moon. But Sheila, said her giraffe friend, you don't have a space rocket. Then we'll make one, Keith, Sheila replied. Yes, the giraffe's name was Keith. Us hippos like to dream big. That's cool. Dreaming big is very cool. Sheila's friends got to work building her a rocket. Quick as you can. Well, you could help me, dear. <laughs> Tina the elephant brought back the biggest trunk she could find. Joyce the gorilla fetched the longest vine. And Derek the ostrich was given the task of gathering the pongiest mountain of rhinoceros dung. Poop. After many days and nights, the animals finally unveiled their space rocket. Well, something that looked a bit like a space rocket. A tiny bit. Thank you, friends. It's my very own Hippopo rocket. All they needed to do now was ignite the rhino dung and blast Sheila into space. But how? Try rubbing those two spiky thingamabobs together to create a spark, instructed the hippopotamus. Well, thank you very much, dear. Okay, let's go, Sheila announced. Is your bottom hot too? Boiling, dear. Look, their, their bottom's on fire. Dream big, everyone. Three, two, one, blast! But before Sheila could say off, it started raining. It rained and rained and rained. It was rainy season. It didn't stop raining for five long months. The moment the rain stopped, Sheila began her countdown again. Three, two, one, blast off! Zoom! Look, there off she goes. The Hippopo rocket shot up into the sky. The hippopotamus watched as the earth became smaller and smaller and the moon became bigger and bigger. But in deep space disaster struck. Oh no. Sheila was so busy munching on her shrub sandwiches that she didn't spot what was hurtling towards her. A giant asteroid. Boom! The hippopo rocket smashed into hundreds of pieces, sending the shocked hippopotamus spinning wildly through space. She tumbled towards the moon. Oh no. 
To her astonishment, Sheila had landed on top of the other hippopotamus just as he was taking his very first hippopo step on the moon's surface. Excuse me. I'm terribly sorry. What on earth, I mean the moon, are you doing here? I, um, um, I wanted to be the first hippopotamus on the moon. Well, you're not. I am. Hercules Waldorf Franklin III. Remember that name. The name of the very first hippopotamus on the moon. Can't we both be the first hippopotamus on the moon? That seems fair, doesn't it? No, look at you. Call yourself a hippopostronaut. You don't even have a hippopo space suit or a hippopo buggy. Get back in the hippopo rocket and buzz off now. With a tear in her eye, Sheila trudged off to the hippopo rocket. Her big dream had been crushed. As the engines roared, Hercules walled off Franklin III, bounded towards it. Stop! That's my hippopo rocket! Oops! Sorry! Blast off! <laughs> She's taken off in his rocket. Seconds later, Sheila realised that she didn't have a clue how the hippopo rocket worked. Roar. Entering the Earth's atmosphere, the hippopo rocket soon began burning up. Within moments, the hippopotamus's bottom was blazing like the sun. It exploded and she's on fire. Sheila hit the Earth with a giant wallop. She lay motionless on the ground, her bountiful behind sizzling like a sausage. Sheila? Wake up! Oh, it's so sad, isn't it? But she wouldn't wake up. This was the saddest day the jungle had ever seen. Tragic, dear. Then, out of the silence, came a sound. A distinctive sound of a bottom bird. All the animals stared at each other. Who would dream of letting one go at such a sad time? <laughs> Another one! Longer and louder than the first. It was Sheila. What's that awful smell? Oh, it's made my eyes water. Try and breathe through your mouth, dear. The hippopo trump was so thunderous, she woke herself up. Now Sheila was famous all over the world as the very first hippopotamus on the moon. Look, she's got a bus and it says, Team Sheila, and all the animals are cheering for her. And it says, Sheila, first hippo on the moon. It crossed out Hercules, and it says, Dream big. You never mentioned the other hippopotamus who got there first. So whatever you do, please don't tell anyone. And he's still up there. Hercules is still up there. <laughs> she accidentally stole his rocket and flew home. Well, there you go, kids. That's a bit of a fun book about the first hippo on the moon. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again on Storytime with Ozzy. Until then, stay keen. Hey kids, did you have lots of fun today watching Ozzy? I hope so. Did you know that we've got a heap of Aussie episodes on our YouTube channel? If you haven't already, go back and have a scroll through. I reckon you'll find some others that you absolutely love. And while you're there, why don't you hit subscribe? That way you won't miss out on any of our new videos that we bring out. We'll see you again soon, kids. Until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right, stay keen, kids. Ozzy, 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 Oi! Ozzy is a friend of yours and he's a friend of